It started almost 20 years ago. When I woke up, I noticed something was wrong. I could hear a faint sound, almost unnoticeable. It sounded like water going through pipes, or how one imagines being underwater sounds. After breakfast, I could still hear it, so I grabbed a couple of tools and applied my ear to the walls of my home, trying to see where the sound was coming from. It took a while, but I finally realized the sound didn't come from anywhere in my house. In every room, I could still hear it with the same intensity, and there was no way every single inch of wall had something going on behind them. I couldn't exactly confirm it, but it felt like it came from pretty close, right beside my ear. And no matter where I went, even if I went outside, the sound continued. While I walked outside to see if I could make the sound go away, I found the second strange thing of the day. In the middle of my yard was a hole now, round and big. I could easily fit through it, if I wanted. It was curious. I crouched and I peeked into it, but I didn't see anything other than darkness. Curiously, it didn't look like a tunnel or some animal's den. It was as if there was an underground cave and the hole was on its ceiling. It was just darkness everywhere. I returned home for a flashlight and directed its light source inside. There was a floor. I wasn't sure how far away it was, but I could see the bottom of the hole. I couldn't believe it. How did all the dirt disappear in one night? I felt tempted to take a ladder and go into the hole, but I decided against it. I was going to work in a couple of hours, and there wasn't any time for these antics. And so I decided to talk to my neighbor, Barney. You see, he was quite a cheery young man. He's always willing to help with anything. And if there was somebody who would go down there for no compensation at all, it was him. I went to his door and knocked, and he opened up shortly after that. Gabriel, what's up, bud? He said, opening his arms as if I were to give him a hug. I smiled sheepishly and waved back. Yeah, um, not much. Hey, there's a little something I need to deal with, but I've got to go to work shortly, so I wonder if you could help me with that. Yeah, sure. What is it? I explained the situation and led him to my yard. Barney examined the hole curiously and tried to see inside. So this thing appeared overnight? Well, that's not usual. Yeah, I was wondering if you could just please check what's down there while I'm at work. Barney flashed a thumbs up, and I, now somewhat relieved for having things in order, went inside to have breakfast before going to work. The watery noise continued during the whole day, but after a while I managed to tune it out. It being very low helped too, and in a sense, it was relaxing. I had a normal morning at work. Nothing special happened. As I lived near home during my lunch break, I returned to talk to Barney and to see what was down there. I found him in his yard, digging. He had done a two meters deep hole and showed signs of wanting to go deeper. Barney, what in the hell are you doing? He had some kind of harness around him tied to a nearby tree. I want to see if it's on my property, too. It certainly seems big enough for it. What are you talking about? <laughs> the ocean, bud. You've got an ocean under your house. And for a moment, I thought the watery sound had made me mishear him. The ocean? Yeah. Barney was pretty excited. You got an ocean, bud. It's salty and all. The hole leads to some sort of huge round chamber. It's big enough to go under several houses. But it's curious. I've been digging for a while and I haven't punctured the ceiling yet. I sighed. While the explanation didn't sound exactly believable, at least what was in the hole wasn't a burial site or the remains of another civilization. Well, okay. Thanks for the help. I guess I'll call a landscaper to get it fixed this afternoon. Would you mind to? Nah, wait. Barney struggled to get out of the hole, but finally managed after using his harness and rope to climb out. 
Gasping for a breath, he tried to talk. Don't do it yet. I want to take another look this afternoon. You know, take some photos and all that. I mean, don't you see? Uh, there's people who need to know about this big-ass space filled with water that's under our neighborhood. And then I realized he was probably right. Calling landscapers wasn't going to be helpful at all. All right, do that. What will you do? I have some connections in the county's office. They'll know what to do, but I suppose it'll be a long, bureaucratic process. You should pack up some stuff in case they decide you need to move out for a few days. I decided I'd do that tonight. When I left for work again, he was going towards my yard with his camera and ladder. I returned in the night, as I had expected. During the night, everything was silent so the gurgling sounds beside my ear were more noticeable. I went to Barney's house to see how the whole matter had gone, but he didn't open the door. Thinking he was in his yard, I went there. The hole he had been digging earlier was still there, just as he had left it, as well as the harness and rope on the tree, and I just noticed in that moment that there were no lights turned on in his house. Now, there were a thousand reasonable explanations for that, so I didn't really pay attention to the fact that Barney wasn't home. Before I entered my house, I went to check the hole in my yard, and there was Barney's ladder propped on the edge, but I didn't bother to see if there was anything down there. Hey, Barney? I called, and nothing replied. I went inside my house and promptly continued with my usual night routines, with the watery sounds still as background noise. That night, I dreamed I was underwater. Just deep blue water, bubbles, in that continuous gurgle. The sounds were still there the next morning. I frowned, taking the determination that if the next day I still heard it, I'd go to a doctor. When I went outside after breakfast, I saw Barney on his porch. Hey, Barney, I said approaching. He didn't pay attention to me, and I soon stood in front of him. How'd everything go? Did you talk to the people you said that you knew? Barney grimaced. Um, I don't remember. He rubbed the inside of his ear, and in that moment I noticed he was paler than normal. He seemed very scared. Oh, goodness, I'm turning insane. Huh? See, that had been an unexpected sentence. Barney stood up, trembling slightly. Gabriel, I need to go. I'll see you later. And he left hurriedly. There was no trace of his usual cheery behavior, which made me suspect something bad had happened to him. I was also a bit disappointed he didn't say anything about what he had done the day before, but my concern for him was bigger than those selfish thoughts. But still, as it was the weekend and I didn't have to work, I waited the whole morning to see if anybody from the city hall or anywhere would come to see the so-called ocean, but nobody came. During the morning I tried to read. But the gurgling had turned a tad louder now. It was harder to focus on anything. But with some effort, I managed to tune it out. In the afternoon, I decided to call a landscaper I knew from some time ago. I had no idea who to talk with in the county office, so I figured I might as well get somebody to take a look before daring to do a trip into the bureaucratic maze. He would know what to do and in a couple of hours, the landscaper arrived. Hey, where's the uh, problem you mentioned? I hadn't told him exactly what I had seen, as it was much easier to show than tell. I beckoned him to follow me to my yard, where I showed him the hole. And it, um, well, it sounds strange, but there's apparently an ocean under there, I said, pointing into the hole. Barney's ladder was still there, the landscaper hesitantly put a foot on the top stair. An ocean. I mean, you know that's impossible, don't you? I know it isn't a literal ocean, but it's a lot of water. Salty water. 
A friend of mine took a look yesterday and said there was enough space to go under several houses around here. The landscaper frowned. You should have called me instead of letting somebody else get down there. He just started to descend until he vanished from my sight, and in a matter of seconds a light appeared. It was a pretty potent lantern. You aren't kidding. This is a lot of water. Is that it? Just just water? Well, it's a cave filled with water, yeah. Seems like it's been here for quite some time. How did you even find it? Well, the hole suddenly appeared. I found it yesterday. Sometimes holes do appear. Perhaps the dirt was weakened by the recent rain or something similar. You should stand away from the hole. It's possible for the ground nearby to crumble and make it bigger. There was a pause for a moment. Oh my. What? What did you see? Uh, there's a camera in here. The light of the landscaper's lantern turned toward the ladder, and soon the man ascended back until I could see him. Here, I received the camera. It wasn't mine, it was likely Barney's. Remembering he was going to take photos, I took the camera and looked at the most recent files. It was just as the landscaper had said. It was a huge cavern with water. It didn't even have stalactites or stalagmites. It was just a round chamber. I couldn't see anything interesting or strange. Just give me ten minutes and I'll be out of here, the landscaper said from the bottom of the cavern. I want to check a few things around the soil. I shrugged and went to wait to the side of the yard, looking at all the photos Barney had shot. There weren't any differences between them, at least until the last one. There was a particularly bright spot in the water. I mean, sure, most of the surface was already bright due to the flash used to take the photos, but there was one point that seemed shinier than the rest, as if there had been a light there. I had to ask Barney about that. Hey, I'm going to be a moment. When you come out, just wait for me, okay? The landscaper said it was okay, so I went to Barney's house. When I arrived, I saw him with the suitcase, about to get into a cab. Barney? Wait, I exclaimed, running to him. Where are you going? To, uh, somewhere where I could get some help, he said gravely, putting the suitcase in the trunk. Help? Help for what? What's going on, man? I don't know. I went inside the hole in your yard yesterday, and then I woke up this morning on my bed, and I just can't seem to bear the noise anymore. The noise? Did he mean he could hear the gurgles now? As soon as he mentioned it, my mind instantly made me focus again on the watery noises, once again filling my mind. Yeah, the noise. There's something in that ocean. I can't get the noise out of my head. It's so loud. It's so... I just can't take it anymore. I'm going mad. Wait, wait, Barney. What's in that ocean? Barney seemed to be at a loss of words. He gestured vaguely until he went into the car and closed it with a slam. I can't describe it. It was so strange and then I drowned. And then I woke up on my bed and these noises were in my head. I have to get some help. And with that, the cab drove off. I stared as it was leaving, confused. So Barney was hearing the gurgling too. It wasn't even that loud. And with some effort, one could suppress the noises until it was barely noticeable. I did it again and returned to my home, thinking about what Barney had said. So there was something in the water. Something that could possibly be linked to the noises. And maybe that water under my yard was the same water I could hear. Or maybe I had unknowingly drank some of that water. I had no idea. But I soon was convinced the bright point I thought existed in the photo could be related to the noises. But of course, the most worrying point was that Barney had said he drowned. I could swear, or at least was 99% sure, that the Barney I had seen was definitely not drowned. Drowned people tend to be, well, you know, dead. 
Did Barney fall unconscious into the water or something? That wouldn't explain the part about waking up on his bed, and I really doubted anybody would have taken him from the depths of the ocean under my property to his bed, so... Anyway, I, as I was starting to get a headache, I went inside to make a coffee while I kept trying to make sense of Barney's confusing words. Only after I spent a whole hour on it, I realized that the landscaper hadn't met me yet. Somewhat worried after the whole thing that happened to Barney, I called to his office. If he hadn't met me, maybe he had gone to his office, but nobody answered. The same thing happened when I called to his home. Did that mean he was still near? Why didn't he try to find me? Or could he still be in the cavern? I went outside and nervously peered into the hole. Um, hello? Are you still down there? But no sound came from the hole. Starting to feel the dread, I practically called on the ground until I was sure my voice would echo in the cavern. What did you find out about the soil? It's starting to be late. What do I need to do to solve this ocean problem? But there was still no answer. Now this was starting to be a bit too much for me, and before I knew it, I was starting to descend the ladder into the hole, hollering the landscaper's name. It didn't take long before I reached the bottom, and that's when I noticed the lantern was just a few steps away from me. I picked it up and illuminated the cavern around me. I was completely alone. The loneliness also allowed me to get my guard down and notice something that startled me as it happened without any warning. The sounds were gone. It wasn't that I was blocking them. It was that they simply weren't there anymore. The silence was a relief, but then I worried about the actual situation. Did something happen to the landscaper? Did he fall into the ocean? I carefully walked closer to the ocean until I was on the shore, almost touching the water. I peered as far as I could with the flashlight, but there was no sign of the landscaper. I remembered the matter I had intended to consult with Barney, the bright point in the middle of the water. To see if I could reach such a thing, I turned off the flashlight and waited, looking around with great attention and it didn't take long before a point on the surface of the water changed. It wasn't a dramatic moment, in fact, I almost didn't notice it at all. Gradually, in a point far away, the water started to light up. A round sphere of light seemed to appear underwater, giving the cave wall behind it a bluish tint. I was kind of perturbed by the possibility of it being related to the landscaper's disappearance. After all, some fish in the oceanic abysses possess this kind of light that allows them to lure their prey. Not that I expected anything like that to be in there, but that's what it reminded me of. I left the hole just after that, and as soon as I stepped onto my yard, the gurgling returned. I was shocked, trying to tell myself it was a coincidence, but it's obvious there was something in the hole linked to the noises. And despite that, I returned to my home and tried to keep my mind off the noises with less success than before. But the gurgling was louder now. It took me a good while to fall asleep. I couldn't take my mind off the landscaper's disappearance and Barney's sudden behavior and the watery noises didn't help either. I called once to the landscaper's office and home, but he didn't answer, and after a couple of hours I managed to sleep, telling myself over and over that they were fine. The next morning I realized that the noises were still there. I groaned, clutching my head. It was going to be the third day and the gurgling didn't show any signs of stopping. I considered going to a psychologist or to a pharmacist or to anybody that could help me to ignore the sounds. I couldn't imagine hearing them for any longer. And so in a dash of anxiety, I ran to the yard to get down into the hole again, craving just a moment of silence. I didn't care I hadn't eaten anything yet or that I was only wearing some shorts. 
I wanted a moment to think of what to do. Once I sat on the little beach near the water, I took a moment to enjoy the silence. I could finally hear my thoughts. First of all, I decided I'd call the landscaper again. If nobody answered, I'd go to his home, to his office or wherever he could be, at least to know he was okay. I was convinced he had taken a swim in the ocean, and if the same thing that happened to Barney also happened to him, then there'd be another man turning insane. Later, I'd go and try to find a way to shut out the gurgling. That was everything I planned. It wasn't much, but it gave me a sense of control. And when I stood up to ascend back to my yard, I noticed the glow in the water was there once again. This time, I wasn't going to go away without checking what was causing that glow. Monstrous fish or not, it was time to get some answers. I stood up on the shore, dipping my feet into the water. The salty water was cold, as expected from a place where no heat was available, and I slowly walked until I was up to my hips in the water. Then I jumped forward to swim. Thankfully, I'm a pretty good swimmer, so I was confident I wouldn't be in any trouble. While I swam, the sphere of light slowly sunk, and when I went towards the shore to see what happened, it moved closer to the surface again. It was clear that there was something moving the light and wanted me to get near it and underwater. I did feel some dread. What could be in there? I doubted that even with my swimming proficiency, I'd be able to swim to the bottom of the ocean. But despite my doubts, I swam until I was directly over the light, and after taking the deepest breath that I possibly could, I dived. The salt in the water hurt my eyes. I felt the impulse of resurfacing and going away, but I was curious what I was going to find. I swam towards the light. That was all I could see. Everything else was dark, and I couldn't even distinguish my own hand in front of my nose. The darkness didn't let me see the cave had a bowl-like shape, and I suddenly felt my arm crashing into the wall. And in a panic, I let my breath go. I hurriedly started to swim towards the surface, but I knew I wouldn't be able to reach it. My body couldn't resist it anymore. I opened my mouth in an effort to breathe. And then I was dumbfounded when I realized I could breathe underwater. It's like it sounds, my mouth and nose filled with water, yet I didn't feel like I was drowning. It was as if there was enough oxygen infused in the liquid for me to breathe. Maybe it wasn't water after all. The salt in the water tingled my nose and mouth, and frankly, it was freaking me out. But still, despite what my intuition was telling me, and despite the discomfort that I had felt, I dived further. Since I could breathe, then I might as well go follow the light. Now, I'm not sure how long I dived. The cave had a bowl shape. I knew that by judging how I crashed into the wall. But after a good while of swimming, I felt like I wasn't making any progress. The light seemed as out of reach as in the beginning, and I could swear I had swam for at least an hour. I wasn't tired. In fact, I felt full of vigor and energy. That doesn't mean that when, after so long, the light showed something new. I didn't feel relief. But there was this cube in the bottom of the ocean. It wasn't so big, barely like six meters per six meters. It was more like a box with the top open. The light stopped directly over it and grew in intensity, illuminating everything around. I could see the rocks through the strange blue tin of the water in the light. Curious, I swam towards the huge box and peered inside. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was a perfect replica of my bedroom, full scale. There was even a figure of me on the bed, apparently sleeping. I swam closer, focusing on the figure, and when I was just to its side, I realized that it wasn't just some sort of object. It was breathing. It was like I was sleeping peacefully in my bedroom. 
Mystified, I slowly extended my arm to touch myself, wondering if when I touched him, I'd feel it as well. As soon as I touched the figure's skin, I felt my throat closing, as if something had grasped my neck. I thrashed, but I couldn't move. I was limited to the point where I was now. I gasped, this time feeling how my lungs filled with water. The salt burned my eyes, and I screamed. My screams came out in the form of gurgles as expected, and it didn't take long before I blacked out. I woke up, startled and sweating. I looked at my hands and around me. There was no blue tint nor strange liquids filling everything. There was the ceiling, as it should be. There was the window, light shining through it. Everything seemed normal. However, it wasn't normal, and it was because of what I could hear. The watery noises were still there, but now they weren't alone. I could hear thrashing, water rushing, the agony of a slow and painful death. And once it seemed like it was over, it repeated again and again and again. The hole in the yard was gone. I never heard from Barney again, and I didn't dare to call the landscaper. I feel guilty. If it hadn't been because of me, then chances are they wouldn't be experiencing this. That hole was meant to be for me, not for any of them. During the day, I can't stop hearing the noises. Nothing I can do distracts me. It's like it isn't only inside my ear, but as well as inside my head. It's unstoppable, and it's a torture. Not even all the time that has passed had made it diminish just a little bit. During the nights, I have the same dream. I can once again see myself sleeping, and I feel the water rushing into my lungs. That's all I dream, over and over every single night. It's been 20 years since I descended into that hole. I have been hearing myself drowning for 20 years.